All right, welcome to a special segment of Justin and Donald Save America. I almost said Save Christmas because this is a Christmas-themed episode. Um, we should have gone with that. <laughs> we should. We should have done. Yeah, Justin, you came across a pretty interesting link you were telling me about, and one of us was like, "You know what? We should do a segment specifically on this." So why don't you just? Uh, Oh, you know what? Before we do, I always have to put this call out there. Sorry, I, I teed you up for to be interrupted by me. But uh, if you like our content, you like our show, you want our channel, you want to help it to grow, you can by doing very simple things that cost you absolutely nothing, hitting the like button, leaving a comment, sharing this video, becoming a subscriber, all things that cost absolutely nothing, but helps us break through these big tech algorithms that prevent our content uh, from being put in front of more people. Justin. What is the link that I'm teasing here? All right. So uh, I came across this article uh, that led me to this post by Black Lives Matters, the organization Black Lives Matters. Okay. Because you got you to gotta distinguish between the two. There is a slogan that people use, Black Lives Matters. Okay. Right. Which means all sorts of different things to different people. Sure. And then there is an organization that has tens of millions of dollars in, in donations every year. It's extremely influential and powerful. That's called Black Lives Matters. And right. this is the group that puts out all of the various, uh, they're the ones that organize many of the Black Lives Matters events that go on. They're the ones that sell the t-shirts and the signs and all of that stuff. Yeah. There are others yeah. too. Yeah, this, one, is one one, the, this is the biggest one. One thing is an obvious statement that everyone can agree with. And one is a Marxist organization. So yeah. there's, yeah, it so is. there's, there's without a, a difference doubt, uh, between those two things. So it's it is good a, that you point that with, out. It, without a doubt is a Marxist organization. And, and this is why the story is important. The story is about uh, a new campaign from this organization, Black Lives Matters, to have a Black Xmas. Now, what is Black Xmas? They want to replace Christmas or alter Christmas, fundamentally transform Christmas, you might say, into a Black Xmas. And this story is really important because uh, you might be thinking, well, you know, this is just about, you know, they want to buy from black owned businesses or something. That's part of it, but it goes so much deeper into that. And what it shows beyond any doubt whatsoever is that the organization Black Lives Matters, again, the one, the biggest organization in the world for BLM, the group that gets tens of millions of dollars from all sorts of celebrities and nonprofits and wealthy donors and everything. This group is a Marxist, socialist, radical, racist organization. That's what it is. Not the people who say Black Lives Matters, who march in the streets necessarily, who believe in the cause of equality for all people. But for the organization, it is absolutely without a doubt a Marxist organization. So this is the... There's plenty of evidence of that already, by the way. But this is like ironclad. I never have to ever show any evidence again other than this. <laughs> it is definitive. So I wanted to point this out. What does it, What is Black Xmas all about? All right. So this was released on November 24th, this article, which is right around the time of Thanksgiving. Right. Uh, it was the, what? The day before Thanksgiving, I think, right? Or yeah, something like that. Um, and it says here, as we prepare ourselves for the holiday season, we are bombarded with ads that seek to whip us up into a consumerist frenzy. That's kind of true. Black Friday sales are being rolled out weeks in advance of Thanksgiving, and at every turn, white supremacist capitalism is telling us to spend our money on things that we don't need to reap profits for corporations. Now, let's just stop for a second. White <laughs> supremacist capitalism. Notice the hyphens. As an editor, I'm, a, I'm very attuned to hyphens. What do the hyphens signify? This is one thing. That's what it signifies. Where's white supremacist capitalism? You can't have any other. There is no other kind of capitalism. It's all white supremacist. Yeah. They are more explicit about that later. It says here, as BLM LA, that's Black Lives Matters Los Angeles organizer Jan Williams reminds us, quote, capitalism doesn't love black people. Remember what I just said a second ago? Capitalism doesn't love black people. In fact, White supremacist capitalism invented <laughs> policing initially as chattel slavery era patty rollers in order to protect its interests and put targets on the backs of black people. Under modern day policing, those targets have been affixed to the backs of black people like and then it names a bunch of people who they say were murdered by police officers. I don't know anything about any of these stories, so I'm not going to, you know, 
comment on those, but it goes on to say, beginning in 2014, so this has been going on for a while, in response to John Crawford's murder by police in Beaver Creek, Ohio, Black Lives Matters has been challenging people to dream of a Black Xmas, to intentionally use our economic resources to disrupt white supremacist capitalism and build Black community. So what are the build, things that they want us to do? Build black better. That's, that's hashtag build black better. Yeah. That, that, that could catch on. You should suggest that. You should, <laughs> you should write in a comment. You should reach out to them. I'm sure we can find their contact information. You can reach out to them. Uh, build black is the first one. So invest in black led black serving organizations by making donations of your loved ones as holiday gifts. That's perfectly fine. Number two, buy black. This is where we get a little racist when buying items. Spend exclusively, exclusively with black owned businesses from Black Friday through New Year. So it's literally saying don't buy from white people. Don't buy from Hispanics. Don't buy from Asians. Don't buy from halvesies. Don't buy from anybody. Right. Only buy from people who are black. That's it. Don't buy from anyone else. How is that not an overtly, horrifically racist thing to say? Yeah, no doubt. That's pretty bad. Not just for one day. They're not saying, you know what? Let's just have this one day where we support black owned businesses. And then every other day you can buy from other people. No, they're saying for the entire holiday season, stop buying from any other race. Anyone else. The only people that you should be buying from, the only ones are black people. Again, that is, there's nothing wrong with supporting black businesses, but that is a fundamentally horrifically racist thing to call for. Now, can you imagine if we had a buy white campaign hashtag and when buying items spend exclusively with white owned businesses from Black Friday through New Year's? Can you imagine what they would say if that was the case? Then they double down on it. It's not just buying from these businesses. You also have to, number three, bank black. Move your money from white corporate banks that finance gentrification, bit prisons, and environmental degradation to black-owned banks. So stop <laughs> that, banking. That don't finance any of those. Apparently, things, they don't do that. So don't bank with anybody that ha that is a white bank. Base your banking decisions entirely on the skin color of the people who are running the bank. That's, yeah. that's the, that's essentially what they're suggesting here. And what do they say? Do they say to banks of color? No, they say to black owned banks. So no Hispanic owned banks, no Asian owned banks can't do business with any of those people. Again, this is fundamentally you know a you know horrifically racist this? thing to say. I'll, I'll let you continue. But one thing I don't really get about this is like, if, if, if there was an, actual white supremacist that's like reading this right like someone who is legitimately racist completely white supremacist wouldn't they be like yeah i agree with all of this like don't buy any of my stuff like i don't want your money <laughs> like don't don't put your money in my bank like they would be in complete agreement with all of this wouldn't they I, I think so. <laughs> I mean, that's, I don't get it. I don't yeah. get it. Like, I mean, it, it's, it's like the white supremacists and BLM completely agree on this. I'm, I'm almost positive. Right. <laughs> I, I think that's, I think that's true. I mean, it's really bizarre, uh, but I think that that's, I definitely think that that's what's going on. <laughs> now they launched a whole website for this. If you scroll up on your, on your webpage there toward the, uh, toward the top, there's a link. Where is it? Oh, wait, actually, no, sorry. It was under okay. number three, Bank Black. Wondering where to start, resources available, Black Xmas. Yeah, click, click that. on that. Yep, click on blackxmas.org. This is their Black Xmas website. They have a whole website for this. Scroll down a little bit, um, and you'll see here, it says here, build black, buy black, bank black. We're dreaming of a Black Xmas. That means no spending with white companies, with white companies. Oh. From 11 26 2021 to 1 1 2022, then it's fine. Then move your then move your bank account. Move it back all into... back to white people after <laughs> that. That's the fault. I mean, this is this is like super super racist, horrible horrible stuff to say. Um, then we have if you go to resources at the top of that website and you click on black um, uh, black Xmas articles, click on that right there. Scroll down a little ways. We can take a look at some of the Black Xmas articles that we're seeing. Keep going. Oh, wait. No, these are links. Sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, so these are the articles that they're that they're talk that they're, 
you know, using to advocate for these things. And some of these things are just like absolutely crazy, crazy stuff. There's one here called resisting white capitalism with the LA Sentinel. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Click on that one. So scroll down. This is uh, a professor. <laughs> I know this is a professor at uh, one of the Cal state schools building black Xmas. What does the title say? Building black Xmas resisting white capitalism in the wake of Donald Trump. All right, let's scroll down. <laughs> And she talks about uh, all these, she makes all these comments about, uh, you know, uh, consumerism and all of these other things and people being obsessed with, with money and how we need to, uh, to, to, to take this opportunity during the Christmas season to fundamentally just completely change all of this stuff. Um, but she says in the second paragraph beneath this picture of this, this boy who was killed, she says this call is fundamentally tied to Black Lives Matters. The call meaning the end of, uh, you know, white Christmas, I guess you could say, uh, is fundamentally tied to Black Lives Matters mission to end state sanctioned violence against black people. We know that state sanctioned violence is rooted in white supremacist capitalism. Since its inception in 2013, Black Lives Matters has recognized the killing of black people at the hands of the police is not simply a question of a few rogue officers, but a part of a system that is built on the backs of black people. Chattel slavery sought to reduce our ancestors to workhorses, mules, and dehumanized beings whose labor could be exploited and whose own bodies belong not to themselves, but to the white masters. Yes, you're describing slavery. It was a horrible, horrible thing. Following emancipation, many were forced into de facto slavery, okay, as sharecroppers and kept in a state of perpetual debt and abuse. Attempts to rise up, unite, and resist were met with the harshest retaliation, lynching. It goes on and on and on to talk about this. These historic atrocities, this is after the next picture, are not simply remnants of the past, but have evolved into our current conditions where black people are incarcerated at more than 400% of our population share, where our unemployment numbers are double that of everyone else, where it would take 228 years of the average black family wealth to equal the average white family wealth. These statistics are startling. And it goes on to talk about how all of this is related to white supremacist capitalism and that capitalism just essentially, just inherently, is anti-black, is totally opposed to black people. That it's so the, would... that it's the genesis of um, of of uh, uh, policing, which again it says is quite literally American policing evolved from slave patrols, former patty rollers used to catch enslaved Africans. This is this, this myth that keeps being perpetuated through all of this stuff. I mean, this Wait, is I don't get it. I don't get it. So capitalism is bad. Right. That's their that's their big message here. Yes. We need so Marxism. how does how does um, like doing your own capitalism, black capitalism, how is that good? I don't know. <laughs> like, shouldn't it all be I about guess we... like having communes and then, you know, sharing ministries and stuff or whatever? Like, I don't get it doesn't make any sense to me i i agree with you so I, much I, of this stuff and, and this is just an overarching complaint um it's just like word salads they just like throw all of this stuff together all of these like uh key loaded terms and all of that to make it seem like they're making a profound point i think so but it's not I, for pr profound at all right so i think the way to think about this is that so much of the sort of and again i'm not talking about everybody who believes that we should have racial equality or anything like that of course not. and use the phrase black lives matter i'm not talking about those people but if you're talking about the people who are involved in the actual organization and the academics who support the actual organization who know what it is and what it's calling for like this a uh, professor who supports these things, who wrote this article for the LA Sentinel or whatever. Uh, what these people, their, their overarching theme is you should do what in their minds benefits black people always, regardless of whether that's ideologically consistent in other ways. Hmm. So in other words, opposing capitalism when it hurts white people is good. But supporting capitalism, so long as it's in a way that helps black people, is also good. And those two things are not contradictory. So you can support, you know, buying 
from black people, even though you're participating in a capitalist exercise when you do it, so long as you're only buying from black people and not from Hispanics or Asians or white people or anyone else. But as soon as you start participating in the system that they perceive as being anti-black people, well, then you're part of the problem. So again, it's fundamentally, and this is, I think, actually, what you asked is a really good question. Fundamentally, that the root of all of this is a very racist idea. And that racist idea is you should support people based on the color of their skin, not or oppose people or systems or businesses based on the color of the skins of the people who are running it or owning it or whatever. And that that's the overarching idea here is it support black people no matter what, even if it means supporting capitalism sometimes, but oppose white people no matter what, regardless of what that means for your other ideological beliefs. And I know that sounds like I'm being like really, really harsh on them, but how can anyone disagree with the language that they're saying on their own website when they say stop buying from white people only buy from black people. Stop banking with white people. Only bank what? with black people. What? What? How else can you interpret that other than that is horrifically racist? Oh yeah, and and absolutely awful and Marxist in its just its tone and everything else. It's obviously that. If, uh, if but you're, more than anything else, it's racism. I mean, if, that's really what it is. If you're gonna like like factor in the actual uh, amount of people that are like subscribed to this, like the actual membership, the size of the group itself, this is the most racist organization in America right now. <laughs> Look it at this is. under Probably. under hashtag Bank Black. The monetary system which creates and maintains the value of the almighty dollar was des was designed to re reproduce imperialism, institutional racism, and inequality. In a just world, the American dollar wouldn't be a destructive economic cudgel used to compel submission to the capitalist order. Perhaps in this world, money wouldn't exist at all, and humans would produce goods and services for common <laughs> welfare with no regard for personal gain or capitalist acquisition. Now, what does that, that is sound communism. Like? That is that is that is absolutely communism. That is communism. It's, it's the definition of communism. Literally, quite literally. I mean, it is the definition of communism. And, and so that that's my that's my point. This, but, but this we, organization is a communist. So, Marxist so we, communist in the most traditional sense. It is a communist Marxist. It may be globalist organization. I don't know. And maybe not. I think it, I think it is globalist because some of the other stuff I've read, I think suggests that it is. And they have an international group. That's sort of the umbrella black lives matters group. So I think it is a globalist communist organization, but this is not us making it up. Like well, it's on their freaking website. So just so look at the website. We run uh stopping socialism.com, stopping socialism TV, right? So one of the big criticisms that we constantly get is like from people that don't read our stuff or listen to our videos mm -hmm. is like we call everything socialist. Yep. It's just a blanket statement. If you don't like something, you call it socialist. We're actually super careful about doing that. We really yep. don't do that. And we recognize that there are a lot of people on the right who should do not do, do that. that and do it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like, I, and it's almost become such a, a thing for like, you know, people on the left uh, saying that this is a, what people on the right to do that when someone were to say, oh, Black Lives Matter, that's like a Marxist organization. They'd roll their eyes and be like, oh, no, it's not. Do you have to read yes, anything more than this one paragraph on their website to prove yeah. that not only is it Marxist, it's flat out communist. <laughs> like yes. that's not us exaggerating. And that's not us trying to call, uh, you know, uh, something socialist because we have universal health care right. or anything like that. This is something straight out of like Marx communist manifesto. That, without a doubt. And, and the thing, the reason why it matters, because I think it does matter for a variety of reasons um, but the, I think the most important reason why it matters is because there are a lot of people who are not communists or socialists or whatever, who want to have a conversation about race and racism and systemic racism and policing and things like that. And I think that those conversations and debates are important. 
and that we should have them. I'm not saying I agree with everything that those people believe either, but it is a conversation that we should have. It is important to have the conversation. And they get frustrated that people like us will say these nasty things about Black Lives Matter, the organization. They don't like that we're saying these things because it's missing the point. But I would, but my, our argument is you people are the ones who are tying yourselves to a radical Marxist organization and that you're demanding that we treat it like it is not a radical Marxist organization. Right. And I'm sorry, but we won't do that. Right. So I'm happy. I'm happy to have the conversation. Let's have it. But, but everyone who's on that left side of the political spectrum that wants us to have this debate has to first say, yeah, we don't support what these people support either. We agree. Right. We don't want communism. Yeah, sure. Okay, if you're willing to do that, then let's come to the table and have a conversation about all sorts of other things. But most of the people on the left are not willing to do that. They're not willing to say, yeah, you know what? What these people are saying, that's way too far. They're not willing to do it. And that's, the, and that's part of the problem. You want me to overlook it, why? Why should I have to overlook literally communists, racist communists yeah. who are saying that I shouldn't buy from Asians and Hispanics and black and anyone except for black people, only black people you should buy from only black people you should bank from. And by the way, uh, uh, policing is basically just a, uh, evolved form of slave patrols <laughs> And um, we should uh, capitalism That's be the is the dumbest claim in the world, too. It absolutely <laughs> is the dumbest claim in the world. Uh, and, and just sort of as an aside, because I was curious about that and I kind of like spent an hour like looking up the origin of policing or whatever. The oldest police departments in America are all in, or mo almost all of them are in cities like, which is what you would expect Boston, New York these big metropolitan cities in the 1800s is where they didn't have slaves. <laughs> they didn't have slaves in any of those places at that time. So obviously they weren't slave patrols. And so if you notice <laughs> what these people will say, because they're very careful about, you'll notice this whenever they talk about policing being an, having its origin in slave patrols, they'll say modern policing has its mm. origin in slave patrols Okay, because they know that policing American policing has its origins in Boston and New York and in Philadelphia and places like that where they didn't have slaves in the 1800s. So they say modern policing so that they can somehow make it as a caveat. Like, well, that kind of policing is gone. The modern kind of policing, that's all from slave patrols and KKK sympathizers and on and on and on. As if I'm supposed to believe that the police department in New York city and, and, you know, Minneapolis and whatever it was taking its cues from Birmingham, Alabama's police department. Like that's where they came up with policing. That's the most ludicrous argument of all time, but that's what these people believe. And if we're going to actually have a conversation about race and racism and policing and whatever, you and I are like very sympathetic to reforming policing in sure. America. Sure. So I'm all for let's talk about how we reform policing and make sure police are not abusing their power and becoming, you know, out of control. I'm totally fine with that. There's lots of reforms of police I support. But the idea that we, in order to have that conversation, have to get down on one knee and pledge allegiance to a Marxist, communist, racist organization like this is completely ridiculous. Yeah. So the left has a responsibility. The people who are on the left who really want to have this conversation in a genuine way, they have a responsibility to denounce this kind of stuff. Right. They don't have to denounce the slogan, but they have to denounce yeah. the organization. And then we can have the conversation on those terms. Or just let's not have the conversation on those terms and just have it on totally different terms without all of the baggage. Sure. But that's not what a lot of these people want. They, they will settle for nothing less than me bowing down to a Marxist racist organization. And, yeah. and I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm not going to do it. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm very curious to see what uh, everyone listening to this, uh, what their takes are on it. So, uh, you know, leave a comment in there. Make sure to hit that like button, share this content, make sure you become a subscriber. All absolutely costless things that you could do to help our 
channel grow and get these videos more exposure. Justin, where can the where can the fine people find you? Uh, at Justin T. Haskins on Facebook, Twitter, Getter, Parler, and uh, all the all the rest. Fantastic. All right. Awesome. We're going to sign off for this episode, but if you want to see more content, feel free to check out the rest of the videos on this channel. You could also go to Stopping Socialism TV for great content and StoppingSocialism.com and uh, different Stopping Socialism social medias, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Parler, Twitter, all of those things. Um, but thank you all for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time.